Kusini. Wapendwa uh, missionary Scott pamoja na mke wake Susan our missionary Scott and Susan his wife Hii ni zawadi kutoka kwa baba askofu wetu mkuu They are a gift to us from our superintendent Yeye baba yetu askofu mkuu ndiye aliyewaruhusu waje kuwa sehemu ya kongamano hili Our superintendent has invited them to be with us in this Wapendwa bwana asifiwe. Kwa hiyo unapowaona hapa wamekuja kwa mkono wa kanisa letu la nchi. So when, when you see them here they came here through our very own church. Na sisi tunajisikia kuheshimiwa sana kutumika pamoja nao. And we feel so honored to be with them. Jamani bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Kabla hawajatusalimia. Before they greet us. Maana atakayehubiri ni Scott because uh, Scott will be sharing the word of God. Susan pamoja na Stephen watakusalimia. Susan and Stephen will say hello. Baada ya kukusalimia Scott ataendelea. After greetings Scott will continue. Lakini tuwapokee kwa yale makofi makubwa ya DMS makubwa kabisa. We invite them with a hand of applause. The DMS hand of applause. Hello from America. Natoka Marekani. I can't understand a word that's being said, but we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Sisi ni ndugu kabisa katika Kristo Yesu. And share the same love for Jesus. Na wote tunashiriki pendo lile lile kwa Yesu. And we are all here to receive from him Na wote tupo hapa kupokea kutoka kwake. What he has for us. Yale aliyotuandalia. Thank you for having us. Asante ni kwa kutukaribisha. Good morning. Habari za saizi? Or afternoon. Habari za mchana huu? I'm still getting adjusted to the time change. Bado naendelea kujipanga na mabadiliko ya muda. But to to go off of what my mother just said. Kukazia pale mama aliposema. It doesn't matter what language we are speaking. Haijalishi tunaongea lugha gani. The Holy Spirit Rom is still moving. yupo hapa na anaendelea kufanya ya kwake. And watching your passion na anaona uh, shauku yenu and fire for Jesus na moto ule wa Yesu makes me want to take that passion back to America. Yesha huku nawe iona hapa natamani nirudishe na kule kwetu Marekani. Thank you so much for welcoming us. Asanteni sana kwa kutupenda. And we are so grateful to be here. Nasi tunajisikia fahari sana kuwa pamoja na nie. Tunashukrani sana. Asante sana. Asante. I also bring greetings from United States. Mimi pia naomba nikuletee salamu kutoka Marekani. And I will echo what my wife and son just said. You may be seated. Niombe sasa tukae. Niombe tukae. Kama ambavyo mke wangu pamoja na mwanangu wamesema, that it is a privilege to be in this room today. Naomba niseme ni heshima kubwa kuwepo katika chumba hiki na ukumbi huu leo. And I say in this room today. Naomba niseme tena nasema katika chumba hiki na nyumba hii leo Because God came down in this room today Maana Bwana ameshuka katikati yetu ndani ya nyumba hii leo And I will echo what my wife just said Kama ambavyo mke wangu amesema I do not know Swahili Mimi sikifahamu Kiswahili I know a couple words Najua maneno machache tu Akuna matara <laughs> <laughs> Hakuna matata. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> but I also know I also know that the Holy Spirit was right here in this room. Lakini nafahamu kitu kingine. Ukiachilia hilo neno moja la Kiswahili najua kitu kingine kwamba Roho Mtakatifu alikuwaepo hapa leo ndani ya chumba hiki. And so I say I was honored and am honored to be in this room. Na mimi niseme niliheshimiwa na najiona nimeheshimiwa sana kuwepo hapa leo. Now my wife and I have been married for 41 years. Mimi pamoja na mke wangu tumekuwa wanandoa sasa kwa zaidi ya takriban miaka 41. We have four children. Tunao watoto wanne. Six grandchildren. Tunao wajukuu sita. And they're all out of the house now. 
Wote sasa ni watu wazima na wako kwenye nyumba zao. So it's just my wife and I. <laughs> Tumebaki mimi tu na mke wangu. And we get to travel more. Na hii inatupa fursa ya kusafiri sana. In about about 3 years ago, takriban miaka mitatu iliyopita, a missionary by the name of Sam Johnson, missionary anaitwa Sam Johnson, came to my church where I pastored. Alikuja kanisani kwangu nilipokuwa ninachunga. And I had a bunch of projectors shining on the wall. Akakuta kanisani kwangu ninazo projecta nyingi nimeziweka kwenye kuta za kanisa. And he said, "Would you do me a favor?" Akaniambia, "Mnaomba nitendee jambo hili jema kidogo." I said, "If I can, yes." Nikamwambia, "Kama nitaweza, nitafanya." He said, "Would you come to Tanzania and put up two projectors in the New Life Center?" Akaniambia, "Twende pamoja nami Tanzania." Alafu kanisaidie kufunga projekta mbili kwenye ukumbi mpya kule Tanzania Dodoma. And I said Sam, let me understand this. You want me to go halfway around the world to put up two projectors. Nikamwambia Sam, hebu nisaidie kuelewa. Naona kama unanichanganya. Yaani unanitaka mimi nisafiri nusu ya dunia nzima niende nikaweke projekta mbili tu. I said no thank you. <laughs> Nikamwambia Utanisamehe mzee. Asante sana. He goes no, I, I need you to come. Akanikomalia, akasema bana nataka twende wote, twende wote. And I said no. Nikamwambia hapana. He goes yes. Akasema ndio. I said no. Nikamwambia a a. He said yes. Akakazana ndio. I said if you go ask my wife if I can go <laughs> thinking she's going to say no. Sasa I'll go, you know, I'll Mimi nikamwambia, nikamwambia nenda kamulize mke wangu. Kama mke wangu atasema ndio nitaenda na nilikuwa najua kabisa mke wangu atakataa. So she, he goes ask my he goes ask Susan my wife. Kwa hiyo akaenda kamuliza Susan mke wangu. If I can go to Tanzania and hang up two projectors. Kwamba kama ananiruhusu niondoke niende Tanzania kufunga projekta mbili tu. And she said yes. Yes mke wangu akasema ndio. Ah. And I went okay. <laughs> Sasa mimi nikasema eh okay. So, So in 2019 of February we came over here and we were in this I, this was my first introduction to Tanzania right here in this room. Kwa mwaka 2019 mwezi wa pili tulikuja hapa na kwenye chumba hiki kiko kwenye nyumba hii na ndio ilikuwa mara yangu ya kwanza kukanyaga Tanzania. And I put up two projectors over there and over here. Nikafunga projekta mbili pale na pale. They moved them to somewhere else which is fine. Inawezekana zimehamishwa tu kwenda maeneo mengine ambayo sio sio tatizo. Aha, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> And I had three days left to just be here. Kwa hiyo siku tatu zikaisha nikiwepo hapa. So Dr. Barnabas asked if I would go to his church and check out the sound and projectors. <laughs> Baba Skofu Mkuu Barnabas akasema kama nitakuwa tayari niende naye kanisani kwake nikamsaidie kuangalia masuala ya mziki kanisani. So we drove to Morogoro. Kwa tukaondoka sasa kwa gari kwenda Morogoro. And we just talked about a lot of different things. Tukao tunaongea mambo kadha wa kadha. And he says to me, I am so glad God has brought you to Tanzania. Askofu mkuu akasema ninajisikia vizuri sana kwamba Mungu amekuleta Tanzania. And I, I should say it this way. Sasa hebu naomba niweke vizuri namna hii. I am so glad God has brought you to Tanzania. Naomba niongee kama yeye kwa msauti wake mzito. Ninafurahi. Ninafurahi sana kwamba Mungu amekuleta Tanzania. And and I said, "Well, thank you. It's great to be here." Na mimi nikamwambia, "Asante, ni heshima sana kuwepo hapa." He goes but i am glad he has brought you to help all of tanzania in sound and video akaongeza tena kwa msauti wake ule ule akasema na furai sana kwamba mungu amekuleta uwasaidie makanisa ya tanzania yote kwenye masuala ya sauti na video i laughed mimi nikacheka he didn't laugh afu yeye asee ajabu yeye kucheka And I thought, is he serious? Nipona yeye mwanangu hajacheka na kusema ina maana anamaanisha. And we went on to other conversations. Sasa tukaendelea na maongezi mengine. Well, I came back 
to the college here. Nikarejea tena hapa chuoni. What's his name? And I talked to Jonas. Nikaongea na mkuu wa chuo hiki. Ah, nikaongea na mkuu wa chuo hiki, Jonas Mkoba. I have a question. Nikamwambia mkuu, nina swali. Dr. Barnabas asked or said he wanted me to help all of Tanzania in sound and video. Nikamwambia uh, Dr. Barnabas ameniambia anataka nisaidie Tanzania kwenye maeneo ya sauti na video. I said he's just teasing, right? Nikamwambia nadhani alikuwa ananitania, si ndio? I'll never forget this. Alo hii sitaisahau. He looked right at me and said, Mkoba akanikata jicho moja akaniangalia akasema, He does not tease. Akasema mtoka mbali hataniagi. And I started thinking, what? Sasa yeye kanifikirisha tena akasema, nini? I go home thinking, God, is this really what you want? Nikaondoka nikarejea nyumbani najiuliza, Mungu ndio hiki unachotaka kwangu? And Dr. Barnabas asked us to come to the 80th anniversary to help out there. Hatimaye Dr. Barnabas akatualika tena kwenye maadhimisho ya miaka 80 ya TAG. Thinking maybe I'll find out I'm not supposed to do this. Sasa nikijua pengine mimi sihusiki kufanya hilo. And so in the beginning he started introducing all the people that came from all over the world. Kwa hiyo kwenye sherehe zile za maadhimisho akaanza kuwatambulisha wageni toka mataifa mbalimbali waliokuwepo pale. And he said and Pastor Scott. Mm, Gafuna anashangaa anasema na mchungaji Scott. Then he said why don't you come and greet us? Akasema naomba uje utusalimie. And I'm thinking nobody else is greeting anybody. Why what? Sasa nikashangaa wote aliowatambulisha hakuna aliyepewa fursa ya kwenda kusalimia. Kwa nini mimi? So I walked up and greeted everybody. And then he told 5000 pastors that day. Pastor Scott is here to help all of Tanzania in sound and video needs. He was on the stage like I am right now. I was down below right there. And when he said that, my neck snapped and went. Sasa alipotamka hilo neno, shingo yangu ikata namna hii pap nikampiga jicho. And I knew right then he was serious. Pale pale nilipomwangalia nikagundua huyu baba anamaanisha. And right then God gave me a plan. Na pale pale Mungu akanipa mpango ndani yangu. Because God will give you a plan if you're available. Naomba niseme Mungu hukupa mpango ikiwa utakuwepo na utakuwa tayari. I did not say God will give you something because you deserve it. Naomba niwaambie sijasema Mungu atakupa mpango kwa kuwa unastahili. I did not say God is looking for people that have it all together. Naomba niwaambie sisemi Mungu anawatafuta watu ambao wamekamilisha vifaa na wako tayari na wamekamilika. All I said if you're willing God will use you. Naomba niseme na nilichosema ni hiki Mungu atakutumia ikiwa utakuwa tayari. So in 2020 of March Kwa mwaka 2020 mwezi wa 3 Weeks before COVID shut everything down. Wiki moja tu kabla ya corona haijafunga vitu vyote. We did our first very our first Tanzania sound technician seminar. Tukawa na seminar ya kwanza kabisa ya wanamuziki hapa Tanzania. And I was told maybe 80 to 100 people would show up. Na nikaambiwa nitakuwa na wahudhuriaji takriban 80 mpaka 100. And I thought to myself how am I going to show 80 to 100 people very technical things about a soundboard? And But what had happened that day? Not 80 to 100 people showed up. But close to 500 people showed up. And we had revival. 
na badala ya kuonyeshana mambo ya sound tulikuwa na uamsho because god showed up in that room maana mungu alijidhihirisha sana ndani ya nyumba ile siku ile and as I left that room, I thought to myself, that's exactly what God wants. He wants every single person that is working in the church to have the anointing of God on their life. So no matter where you're at right now, and where your place is in the church, God wants the anointing of God on you. Can we thank God right now? Naomba tumshukuru Bwana kwa kelele la shangwe na makofi tena mbele za Bwana wa Bwana. And in coming here today and just asking God what he wants me to speak on. Wakati nakuja hapa na nikimuuliza Bwana anataka niseme nini mimi hapa. And after your secretary just came up here and knocked it out of the park. Na baada ya katibu mkuu kuja hapa na kufungua mikoba yote akaachilia alivyoachilia. I asked him what do you what do you think I can do now with what you just did, okay? Sasa nikamwambia unadhani mimi nitafanya nini tena ukiachilia haya yote uliyofanya wewe? And he said we have the same spirit here. Because God is with me as well, right? And God has a message in me to give to you, right? Amen. Amen. The first word that I want to talk about is the word worship. We are all worshipers. Sisi wote ni waabuduo. Every every single human being is a worshiper. Kila mwanadamu chini ya jua ni muabudu. Worship is our a response to what we value most. Ibada ni mwitikio katika kile tunachokithamini na kukiheshimu zaidi. So you have to ask yourself this one question, what is number 1 in my life? Ni kuombe ujiulize swali hili, hivi mimi ni nini kipaumbele changu katika maisha yangu? And you may you may say, well, Pastor Scott, didn't you just see what just took place? I've been a pastor over 40 years. I've seen almost everything that I wanted to see and things I did not want to see. No, hey, hey. Naomba niseme nimeona mambo yote ya aina mbili, sampuli zote, ninayoyataka na nisiyoyataka kuyaona. And there's one thing I can tell every single person here. You can fool anybody you want. You can be in a place that you're telling everybody Jesus is number one. But there is a hidden thing that nobody knows about. And that hidden thing keeps Jesus from number one. I am not saying everybody or anybody in this room is in that place. But God has made it very clear in Exodus chapter 20 verse uh, 2 you must not have other you must not have any other god but me mstari wa pili maandiko yanasema mimi ni bwana mungu wako niliyekutoa katika nchi ya misri katika nyumba ya utumwa usiwe na miungu mengine ila mimi he is number 1 maana yake ni kwamba yeye ni namba 1 now i come of course from america mimi ni kweli natoka marekani and many tanzanians think you want what Americans have. Aha. Wa Tanzania wengi kuna wakati wanadhani wanayataka ambayo wa Marekani wanayo. And when I say that you want maybe the stuff. Na ninaposema hivi namaanisha vitu, vitu hivi vinavyoonekana kwa macho. And the stuff is what we need, yes. Na vitu ni tunavihitaji kweli, but it's not number 1. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is number one. 
Now why do you say this? In America, we have come to the place that we worship the creation instead of the creator. And I never want to come over here and not tell you the truth. I love my country. I will do anything for my country. But I do know this. There are 192 nations around the world. There are 72 nations right now that are either uh, not growing in Christianity or not going down in Christianity in their numbers. Kuna mataifa 72 duniani ukiachilia hayo 290 kitu nilioyataja, haya 72 yamefika mahali hayakui wala hayapungui kwenye maisha yao ya kiroho. And I am sad to say the United States is one of those. Na ninasikitika kusema nchi yangu ya Marekani iko ndani ya hayo mataifa 72. When I sat at the table there, nilipokuwa nimekaa kwenye meza pale, and your treasurer told me, or maybe sector told me, that now you have 15,000 churches in Tanzania. Nikaambiwa hapa na katibu mkuu mna makanisa takribani elfu kuminatano ya TAG Tanzania. You went from 10,000 of a goal and now you're going past that goal where there's 15,000 churches, 15,000 pastors. And I'm here to tell you, you are in what is called a revival. Naomba niseme mmeondoka katika ule mpango wa miaka 10 uliokuwa na makanisa chini ya 1000, leo mmevuka mmeenda kwenye idadi kubwa ya maelfu ya makanisa na hiki mnachoendelea nacho ndicho kinachoitwa uamsho. You have taken your faith. Imani yenu imefika sasa mahali and you have shared it with people. Mmeichukua imani yenu na mmeishiriki kwa watu, mmeishirikisha kwa watu wengine. And now they are coming into the church. And you may be looking at me like, well, that's what we're supposed to do. Not like that America. We do have people that are on fire for God. And then we have people that just put in their time. They come to church. But they wait and look at the time. Hoping it to be over. What I just experienced, your secretary talked for two hours, and nobody left the room. And everybody here was excited to hear the whole two hours. Na kila mmoja wenu bado alikuwa anashauku na hamasa ya kutaka kuendelea kusikia ndani ya hayo masaa yote mawili. And you're still listening. Na bado hata sasa mmekaa mnasikiliza. You are hungry for God. Hii maana yake inaonyesha bado mna njaa kwa mambo ya Mungu. When you came up here, mlipokuja hapa mbele, you weren't seeking a a position. Hamjaja hapa kwa ajili ya nafasi. You weren't seeking a denomination. Hamjaja hapa kwa ajili ya mambo ya dini. You were seeking the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mmekuja hapa ili kumtafuta Bwana wa Bwana na Mfalme wa Mfalme. You were going after him. Naomba niwaambie hamjaenda mbali naye because you're hungry for God. Maana mna njaa na Bwana. That may be something normal to you. Naomba niwaambie mnaweza mkakiona hicho ni kitu cha kawaida kwenu. But my heart breaks right now. Because that is not normal where I come from. And so many people think that if I could just have what America has. I will have what I need. You have what you need. You have the fire of God in this place. When I was listening to everybody sing, 
It was a beautiful choir in this place. Naomba niwaambie nilikuwa nasikia uimbaji mzuri sana hapa ndani. You guys did harmonies on your own. Naomba niwaambie mna kiwango cha ajabu sana cha uimbaji hapa ndani. I felt like I was part of heaven right now. Nilikuwa ninajiona nimeingia kwenye kipande cha mbingu tayari. Because the voice of the singers were worshiping the number one their god. Maana sauti za waimbaji ni kweli zilikuwa zinainuka na zinamwabudu namba moja wenu ambaye ndiye Bwana wa mabwana na Mungu wetu. And when that takes place the anointing of God comes in. Naomba niwaambie ndio maana hata muda haujaenda uwepo wa Bwana unamwagika. And that anointing breaks every chain that binds. Na uwepo huo unavunja kila nira na kila minyororo. Well I just said every human being on the planet believer or non-believer is a worshiper. Naomba nileje nimesema kila mwanadamu chini ya jua awe ameokoka au hajaokoka ni muabudu. There's three angels that the Bible talks about. Kuna malaika wa aina tatu Biblia inawazungumzia. One his name is Michael. Malaika wa kwanza ni Mikael. And Daniel, we call Michael a prayer warrior. Ah tunamuita kwenye kitabu cha Daniel tunamuita malaika huyu malaika wa maombi. Because in Daniel 10:12, kwenye kitabu cha Daniel sura ya 10 mstari wa 12, he said, "Don't be afraid, Daniel." Anamwambia usiogope e Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, mana tangu siku ya kwanza ulipoanza maombi na kujinginyekesha mbele za Mungu wako, your request has been heard in heaven. Mahitaji yako na maombi yako yalisikiwa mbinguni. I have come in answer to your prayer. Nimekuja kuleta majibu ya maombi hayo. Michael gives us an understanding that God has heard our prayer and he sent this messenger called Michael back in Daniel. Mikael anatusaidia kuelewa mahitaji ya Danieli yalishasikiwa na Mungu akaamuru majibu na akamtuma Mikaeli ayalete majibu hayo. We also hear about an, an angel called Gabriel. Lakini pia tunaye malaika mwingine anayeitwa uh, uh, Gabriel. Gabriel was sent to Zachariah. Malaika huyo alitumwa kwa Zakaria. To tell him about a son that was going to be born. Aende akamueleze habari za kijana atakayezaliwa. We hear that he he went to Mary. Tunaambiwa pia alikwenda kwa Mariam. To tell her about a son that was going to be born. Ili akampeleke taarifa za mtoto wa kiume atakayezaliwa. He came in Luke 1:19. Kwenye kitabu cha Luka sura ya kwanza 19 and he says I am Gabriel. Anajitambulisha anasema mimi ni Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. Ninae nisimamae mbele za uwepo wa Mungu. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. Na ni huyo Mungu aliyenituma kwako ni kuletee wewe habari hizi njema. God has sent angels as messengers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mungu huwatuma malaika kama watumwa wake. There's a third angel. His, His name is Lucifer. You may know him as the devil. Or Satan. He is a created being. We sometimes think God is here. Ziko nyakati huwa tunafikiria Mungu yuko kulia hapa. Lucifer being here. Alafu Lucifer amekaa kushoto hapa. As if they're in a boxing match. Alafu wamezipanga namna hii wako ndani ya ulingo wanachapana ngumi. As if when the bell rings, alafu wanasubiri kengele ipigwe. They sit there and box. Waanze kurusha makonde. Let me tell you how this works. Naomba niwaambie hii inavyofanya kazi. The bell rings. Kengele inalia. God hits Lucifer one time. Na Mungu humpiga shetani mara moja tu. In one second. Kwa ile sekunde moja. And he is down. Na shetani huyo huanguka mara. There is no fight. Naomba niwaambie hakuna mapambano dhidi ya hawa wawili. When he is number 1. Yeye ndiye wa kwanza. Because he's going to fight the battle for us. Naomba niwaambie yeye huyo wa kwanza kupigana vita kinyume chetu kwa niaba yetu. We have to call on our God to do so. Tunapomwitia Bwana afanye hayo kwa niaba yetu. Where he says every knee will bow. Anaposema kila goti litapigwa. Every tongue confess. Kila ulimi utakiri. That Jesus is Lord. Ya kwamba Yesu ni Bwana. So we see that Satan in John 10:10. Tunamuona shetani kwenye Yohana 10 mstari wa 10. Comes as a thief only to steal, kill and destroy. Yeye huja kama mwizi kuiba na kuharibu. We also see over in Luke chapter 10 verse 17. Lakini tunaona pia kitabu cha Luka sura ya 10 mstari wa 17. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall 
from heaven like lightning. Yesu anasema, nalimuona shetani akianguka kidondoka kutoka juu so kama when, nuru iliyozima. So when God knocked him out, hivyo sasa kwa Mungu, he sent him to the earth. Amemtupa shetani chini. It was like lightning. Alimtupa kama kama kinuru cha kuzimika tu papu. And it was done. Na kazi yake ikaisha. We also understand with Lucifer that God created this being Mungu alimuumba huyu kiumbe over in Ezekiel 14:14 katika kitabu cha Ezekiel 28:12 Ezekiel 28:12 msari wa 12 and he says this statement you were a seal of perfection Ezekiel sura ya 28 msari wa 12 maandiko yanasema wewe ulikuwa mkamilifu. You were full of wisdom. Ulikuwa umejawa na hekima. You were perfect in beauty. Wewe ulikuwa mzuri na wakupendeza. He started saying that he was covered with every precious stone. Lakini pia anaendelea kusema ulizungukwa na mawe ya thamani. And then he says and the workmanship of your temples and pipes were prepared for you on the day you were created. Lakini anamwambia namna ulivyotengenezwa wewe ukawekewa vitu ndani yako ambavyo viliwekwa maalum kwa ajili ya sifa hivyo viliumbwa navyo tangu siku ya kuumbwa kwako he had music instruments built within him huyu <laughs> lucifer aliumbwa ndani yake akawekewa vyombo vya muziki we are told that he could have been possibly the first worship leader in heaven Maandiko yanatuambia pengine yeye ndiye aliyekuwa kiongozi wa kwanza wa ibada mbinguni. But Lucifer said over in Isaiah 14:14 Kwenye kitabu cha Isaya sura ya 14 mstari wa 14 He said I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Anasema nami nitapanda nitapanda mpaka juu ya mlima wa Bwana. I will be like the most high. Nami nitakuwa kama Mungu mkuu. And sinner and sin entered his life. Na mara dhambi ikaingia maishani mwake. And he was shot down to the earth like lightning. Na kisha akatupwa kwenda chini duniani. Now, Satan hates your guts. Sasa naomba niseme maneno haya. Shetani anakuchukia wewe. I cannot emphasize this so much. Siwezi nikasisitiza hii sana. He hates you. Naomba niseme shetani anakuchukia. Not only because you're human. Sio kwa sababu tu wewe ni mwanadamu. But even he hates you more. Lakini anakuchukia zaidi. You are leading people in worship. Unachukiwa wewe kwa sababu wewe unaongoza watu katika ibada. But I need to have you understand something. Natamani uelewe jambo hili. The reason Satan hates you is because you took his job. Moja ya sababu za msingi kwa nini shetani anakuchukia wewe umechukua nafasi yake. Because you have musical instruments in you. Maana wewe sasa ndani yako umeumbwa na vifaa vya mziki. You're saying what are you talking about? Unaweza kusema unaongea nini sasa? I don't have pipes or temporals in me. Mimi ndani yangu huko sina ile mipira ya 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 ya, ya mziki huko ndani. Let's go with the worship band. Hebu tuangalie vifaa vya mziki hapa. You have strings right here. Hapa tuna nyuzi za magita. The guitar plays and you know exactly he did a great job too. Mpiga gita amepiga na wote tumejua na amefanya kazi nzuri sana. You have drums over here. Hapa mna ngoma. It keeps the beat. Hii ngoma inatusaidia kutunza ile kick ule mdundo. It keeps, mdundo. The, it keeps the tempo. Inatunza ule mdundo. T t t You also have maybe not here but you can use it on your keyboard to sound like horns. Pengine hapa hatuna mfumo wa pembe wa firimbi au tarumbeta lakini kinanda hiki kinaweza kikatoa mlio wa aina hiyo. And the worship team did amazing job. Na naomba niseme timu yetu ya praise imefanya kazi nzuri nisemeni amina kubwa kwa Bwana Yesu. They did. Give my hand. Wa, wapeni makofi, wapigie makofi. Give my hand. Wape makofi mazuri, wamefanya kazi nzuri. Because they led you into worship. Maana wametuongoza na wamekuongoza wewe kwenye kuabudu. But you may not know this. Pengine unaweza kuwa hujui hii. Every single person here is a leader when it comes to worship. Kama ulikuwa hujui, kila mmoja wetu aliyekaa hapa ndani ni kiongozi wa ibada inapofika swala la kuabudu. You're saying, "Oh no no no, we have one leader." Unasema, "Ah ah ah, tunaye kiongozi mmoja tu anayetuongoza kuabudu." Yes, that person is leading you. Yes. Ni kweli huyo amesimama mbele yetu kutuongoza. But because 
God has made you like he made Satan with <laughs> instruments in you. Mm-hmm. Kwa sababu Mungu amekuumba wewe vile vile kama alivyo kwa amemuumba ibilisi shetani na vifaa vya mziki ndani yake it makes everybody here a leader in worship. Vifaa hivyo viko ndani yako na hivyo vinakufanya wewe kuwa kiongozi wa ibada. You're saying Scott, I don't understand. Unataka kusema Scott sielewi. What instruments? Vifaa hivyo viko wapi mimi? Well, if you look in your throat, you <laughs> have these two strings right here called vocal cords. Uh-huh. Ukiangalia hapa kwenye kwenye koo lako hapa hapa kwenye shingo kwa ndani kwenye koo huko, kuna kuna pembe mbili, kuna nyuzi mbili zinapita kulia na kushoto. And these two strings Hizi nyuzi mbili hizi kama za guitar hizi. They go oh, they, they go wide and they go sh- sh- um narrow. Eh eh. Unaweza ukazitune hizi, zika zikapanuka na zika zikawa nyembamba kama vile unavyotuni guitar. And you'll hear things like ha ha. Sasa unaweza ukasikia kitu kama ha ha. Is that the right that how he said that how he laughed? Our secretary Secretary alivyokuwa anacheka jamani si ndio hivyo? Jamani alivyokuwa anacheka katibu mkuu ni namna gani? <laughs> There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hicho kicheko hicho. And it's the vocal cords. Manake hizo ni nyuzi za gitaa hapa kwenye kwenye koromeo lako hapa kwenye koo. They changed. Zinabadilika. <laughs> Because of those vocal cords. Ni kwa sababu ya hizo nyuzi hapa kwenye koo hapa. You have strings in you. Ziko nyuzi hapo. You have horns in you. Lakini pia wewe ndani yako una matarumbeta. Where's there a horn? Tarumbeta hizo ziko wapi? You have these things called lungs. Una kitu kinaitwa mapafu. And you blow out from your lungs. Unatoa pumzi, upepo. Unapumua kutoka kwenye mapafu. And because these horns need air. Kwa sababu hii uh, tarumbeta inapigika kwa upepo. And when the air goes through the strings Kwa upepo ule unapopita kwenye nyuzi it starts making noise. Unatengeneza kakelele. You're saying, well, where are the drums at? Sasa unaweza kusema kama nimeungwa na mziki ngoma ziko wapi? God made you. Mungu amekuumba two hands. Na mikono miwili. And I watched you. Na nimewatazameni mimi. Nikiwa hey, ni nimewacheki namna mnavyopiga drum zenu. Maana niliona mnafanya hivi. Twende wote namna hiyo. Hey. You you kept the beat like the drummer Aha. kept the beat. Kumbe hiyo ilikuwa inakusaidia wewe kutengeneza kiki baki kama ya kwenye drums ile pale. You have drums in you keeping beats. Maana yake wewe ndani yako una ngoma inayokusaidia kutunza huo mdundo. You have strings in you making noise. Mm-hmm. Una nyuzi za gitaa hapa zinakufanya upige kelele. <laughs> <laughs> and you have horns in you that are blowing out. Lakini pia una tarumbeta huko ndani inatoa upepo wake. You are the new worship leader. Ninyi ndio viongozi wapya wa ibada semeni amina. Hey hey. hey, hey. And God, and Satan hates your guts. Na hivyo shetani anakuchukia. You took his job. Wewe amefukuzwa yeye kazi, wewe umeajiriwa kwenye nafasi yake. And he's never getting it back. Na naomba niwaambie kamwe hatarejeshwa kazini. I said this earlier. Nimesema hii tangu mwanzo. I want you to have the heart that God wants you to that God is looking for your life to have. Ninatamani uwe na moyo ambao Mungu anakutaka uwe nao. I will say in America. No man is saying come American. All I can tell you is Ninachoweza kusema ni Anybody that comes into my church today Mtu yote anapokuja kanisani kwangu leo I cannot see their heart. Siwezi kuona moyo wake. I cannot see what's inside. Siwezi kujua ndani yake kuna nini. I don't know what they have gone through. Siwezi kujua amepitia mambo gani. I don't know where they are at spiritually. Na siwezi kuelewa maisha yake ya kiroho yakoje. But I've seen in 40 years. Lakini nimeona kwa miaka hii ya 40. People acting like their heart is right. Katika miaka hii ya 40 ya uchungaji wangu nimeona watu wakijifanya wako sawa. Does that make sense? Sijui kama mnanielewa. Meaning you can we can all fool people, right? Naomba niseme sisi wote tunaweza tukawadanganya watu. 
We can trick them, right? Tunaweza tukawahada watu. We can act like something that we're not, right? Tunaweza tukajifanya kuwa vile ambavyo wala hatuko. I'm not here to say you are doing this, okay? Sisemi haya kukwambia wewe ndio unafanya hivyo. But I do know one thing. Lakini najua jambo moja. When you keep him number 1, tukimfanya yeye kuwa wa kwanza wetu. And you let the anointing of God come in. Na ukaachilia uwepo wa Bwana kushuka juu yako. You will have what you had right here. Naomba niseme mtakuwa na yote mlionayo niliyoyaona hapa. And that anointing breaks people's hearts. Na huo upako unaivunja vunja mioyo ya watu. And we need our heart to be broken for God. Na tunaitaka mioyo yetu ivunjike kwa ajili ya Bwana. We need to call upon his name. Tunatakiwa kuliitia jina la Bwana. Give him everything we have. Ili tutoe na kumpa vyote tulivyo navyo. Because when that takes place, maana ikiwa hiyo haitachukua nafasi yake. The anointing of God comes on you. Upako ule wa Bwana ukaja juu yako. And no matter where you go, haijalishi ni wapi unaenda, somebody is going to come to you. Yuko mtu atakujia. And they're going to talk to you. Ataongea na wewe. And you can share Jesus with them. Na wewe utasema naye juu ya habari za Yesu. Because the anointing of God is drawing them. Maana upako na nguvu za Bwana zimemvuta kuja kwako. Now, reason I say is that my heart is breaking for America. Kwa nini nimesema kwamba moyo wangu unavunjika sana kuhusiana na Marekani? Because they say they have the anointing. Maana wanasema wana upako. Have you ever heard you you have heard, you have read about false prophets, haven't you? Pengine mmesoma juu ya manabii wa uongo, si ni kweli jamani? And these false prophets act like they have heard from God. Na hawa manabii wa uongo huwa wanajifanya kama wanayoyasema yametokana na Bwana. And the people that hear this don't know they're false prophets. Na wakati mwingine watu wanaowasikia hawajui kwamba hawa ni manabii wa uongo. Because I believe the people that hear this have also fallen asleep. Maana <laughs> Kwa nini hawajui? Ni kwa sababu hata wasikiaji wenyewe wameshakufa kiroho wamelala usingizi wa kiroho. So they don't know really the difference between truth and lie. Kwa sababu ya kifo hicho cha kiroho hawajui neno la kweli na neno la uongo ni lipi. Do you know the truth between truth and lie? Unapojua ukweli unapojua tofauti iliyopo kati ya ukweli na uongo. And if God asks you to do anything will you do it? Na Mungu akakuruhusu ufanye kitu utafanya. Because he is truth. Maana yeye ni kweli. He knows your life. Anayajua maisha yako. And if he asks you to do anything, would you do it? Raise A- your hand if you would. Akikutaka ufanye jambo, utafanya maana una mahusiano naye. Nani mtu wa namna hiyo anayesema mimi niko tayari kufanya kile Bwana atakachoniagiza maana naijua sauti yake. You have your hand raised. Inua mikono, nimeiona mikono imeinuliwa. You will do anything God asks you, right? Je, utafanya chochote Bwana atakachokuagiza, si ndio? He will he will you will step out in faith. Je, utachukua hatua ya imani? Think about what you just said. Sasa na Fikiria vizuri maamuzi yako hayo. Cuz God will step you out in faith. Maana Mungu atakutaka na atachukua hatua kwa imani hiyo ulionayo. I told you about how I got to Tanzania. Nimewaeleza historia yangu ya kuja Tanzania. The goal is very simple. Kusudi ni kidogo tu. We want to talk to sound technicians. Tunataka tuzungumze na wataalamu wa sauti. Not because they're not doing a good job because they are. Sio kwa sababu hawafanyi kazi nzuri, hapana, wanafanya. We want to help anywhere we can in that area. Kusudio la Mungu ni kuturuhusu kufanya au kusaidia katika eneo lao pale tunapoweza. This is coming from your superintendent. Hili ni agizo kutoka kwa askofu wenu mkuu. Because even in America, maana hata Marekani It's like right now everything is very clear. Good job guys. Kwa mfano sasa hivi hata utaratibu na utaalamu wa vifaa uko vizuri. Vitu vyote viko safi. Ninyi watu wa sauti asanteni sana mmefanya kazi nzuri sana. Maana naisikia sauti vizuri. Because sometimes you could it could talk like this and you don't know what they're talking about because you're all 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 maana wakati mwingine fundi mitambo anaunga vyombo hivyo inakuwa he unapojaribu kutaka kuhubiri sasa injili but they don't understand what you're saying watu wanakukondolea macho tu waelewi unachoongea or have you heard, ever heard a real high Wee! wakati mwingine unasikia ni miruzi tu before Somebody grabs the mic. Yaani mtu anashika tu mic. 
and someone starts talking and getting hyper na mwingine yani anaanza akitaka kwanza kuongea vitu havieleweki and what happens nini kinatokea you start hearing a yani ghafla unaanza kusikia miruzi miruzi and it it just hurts your ears inachoma masikio do you know all you have to do is go one little turn and that little that noise goes away hivi unajua unachotakiwa kufanya nikugusa tu kale kanobo kale kana ni kidogo tu hivi na maisha yanaenda sawa but they don't know that lakini hawajui yako kakugusa it's not their fault sio kosa lao but if they just turn that little it's over yani agenda nikugusa tu kale kanobo kidogo tu and i just say this sasa nasema hili i am not here to tell people what to do or how to do it Siko hapa kuambia watu jinsi gani ya kufanya na namna gani ya kufanya. I am only here to help wherever is needed. Mm-hmm. Niko hapa kutoa msaada pale inapobidi. I could tell you that my heart from day one coming into Tanzania fell in love with Tanzania. Naomba nitangaze na niseme tena moyo wangu uliipenda sana Tanzania mara ya kwanza tu nilipokanyaga hapa. Makofi yangeongezeka kidogo zaidi. And so if your heart falls in love with something why would you want to hurt it you don't Moyo wako unapokipenda kitu huwezi ukajificha usikifanye huwezi So the bottom line I want to keep loving it and helping it by bringing over as many sound technicians with me that could just help in whatever area that is needed Wow kwa hiyo kama ndivyo basi moyo wangu kwa kuwa umeshaipenda Tanzania na umelikubali kusudi na agizo nililopewa nia ya moyo wangu ni kuwaleta wataalamu wengi zaidi pamoja nami ili waje tusaidiane kwenye eneo hili la mziki na sauti pale inapobidi makofi zaidi wana DMS but i need your prayers lakini naomba niseme na hitaji maombi yenu this has never been done before hiki kitu hakijawahi kufanyika kabla. Sound technicians in America stay behind the board all the time. Wataalamu wa vifaa vya mziki huko Marekani mara zote wamesimama nyuma ya mixer zao na mashine zao. They make the church service sound amazing. Wanafanya kazi nzuri sana ya kutengeneza sauti kanisani. But these people have never been across the ocean or on a mission trip. Hawa wataalamu hawa hawajawahi kusafiri kwenda nje ya Marekani kuvuka hayo mabara au mabahari hayo. And every sound technician I start talking to Na kila mwana uh, kila mtaalamu yeyote wa sauti ambaye nimewahi kuzungumza naye they sound like me when I sent when Sam Johnson asked me to come to Tanzania. Wamekuwa wakinijibu majibu yale yale ambayo mimi nilimjibu Sam Johnson aliponiambia nije Tanzania. And I say come to Tanzania with me and they they go no. Ninapomuomba twende pamoja Tanzania anasema hapana. And I say yes. Naambia ndio. And they say no. Anasema hapana. I need the anointing of God to break that break that no and put it into a yes. Naomba mniombe ili mafuta ya Roho Mtakatifu yawepo nikaivunje hiyo hapana yao ili igeuke kuwa ndio. Stand with me please. Naomba usimame pamoja nami. I'm so honored to be here. Ninajisikia kuheshimiwa sana kuwepo hapa. Matter of fact, ukweli ni kwamba I have a hard time believing I'm supposed to be here. Ah, ukweli ni kwamba moyo wangu bado unateseka kuamini kwamba mimi nilipaswa na ninastahili kuwepo hapa. Because so many times there are so many other people that we think are better than us in whatever we do. Maana mara nyingi sana huwa tunaamini na tunadhani ya kama tuna kuna watu bora zaidi waliopaswa kufanya vile ambavyo sisi tunapaswa au tumeagizwa kufanya. But all I can tell you is this. Lakini ninachoweza kusema ni hiki. When God speaks to you. Mungu anaposema na wewe. You do it. Unafanya. And you see where he's going to lead you with it. Kisha utamuona namna atakavyokuelekeza katika hicho alichokuagiza. So this morning as true worshipers of God. Sasa asubuhi hii leo kama waabudu halisi wa Mungu. Where's God going to take you? 
Ni wapi Mungu anataka kukupeleka? Think about it. Jaribu kufikiria. What is your dreams? What are your dreams? Ndoto zako ni zipi? What would you like to see God do? Ungetamani umuone Mungu akikutendea nini? What are those things that you can't go to sleep because it just pounds in your heart mm. of God of wondering how God is going to do this? Mhm. Ni nini kinachokunyima usingizi kila unapokikumbuka ambacho Bwana amesema na wewe na unatamani ukitekeleze na ukifanye? He created you in a certain way. Mungu amekuumba katika namna ya ajabu. He has a certain gift within you. Mungu amewekeza karama na vipawa ndani yako. He's crying out. He's asking right now to move in the direction he is leading. Analia, anachokilio, anakutamani utembee katika mwelekeo ambao yeye anakutaka utembee. And you may be saying I'm doing that. Na pengine unaweza ukasema mimi nafanya hivyo. Because I'm not saying you're not. Maana na mimi siko hapa kusema haufanyi. Then you keep going that direction that God is asking you to go. Kwa hiyo endelea kutembea katika mwelekeo ule ambao Bwana anakutaka utembee. But lakini without a clear understanding of what God is saying to you pasipo uelewa mzuri wa kutosha juu ya ni nini Bwana anakuelekeza kufanya you will flounder in everything. Utafanya mambo yote utahangaika kwenye kila eneo. Because you will always doubt is this really what I'm supposed to do? Maana kila wakati utakuwa unatilia mashaka je hiki ndicho Bwana anataka nifanye? But when you truly believe that this is what you are supposed to do, La- you will take steps of faith. Lakini ukishaelewa kwa uhalisia na ukaamini kwamba hiki ndicho Bwana amenielekeza kufanya, utachukua hatua to do the very thing that makes your heart just pound out of your chest. Mm. Kwenda na kufanya kile ambacho moyo wako unajisikia Bwana amekuelekeza kufanya. If you would please close your eyes. Kama unaweza niombe ufunge macho yako.